Vamos a analizar estas cuestiones y mucho más de la mano de Tisha Frink, astrofísica de la Universidad de Michigan. Hi Tisha, thanks for being here in Northwest TV. It's a pleasure. How are you here? Thank you. Hello. We are talking about the, the three Atlas. Uh, we would like to ask you about uh, the three Atlas and what is different, uh, for example, uh, from the Chuai Polishop. Yes, yeah, so the three I Atlas is different from our first two interstellar objects. It's much faster and it's having a lot of material being blown off of it, much more than it's the second interstellar comet 2i Borisov. Um, and it's much different than our solar system comets because it comes from a solar system outside of our own. So we get to learn more about early uh, planet formation from that, those systems. Uh, Tisha, what can we learn about uh, these three Atlas? Uh, what is showing us? You're right. So as the uh, three Atlas got closer to the sun and it is going to come back around, um, it's outgassing a lot of materials. And those materials are from the, the early formation of planets in an in a extrasolar system. So we get to see the most pristine materials and the earliest materials that these planets were being formed from, and those are outgassed um, from the comet. And we'll get to see that as it comes around from the sun and gets uh, closer, um, uh, closer to the sun and comes out, and we'll be able to see it from ground-based observations. Isa, we have been talking with Avi Loeb, uh, this uh, Harvard scientific uh, who has uh, a lot of hypotheses about uh, this triadlas. Uh, what do you think about Avi Loeb and uh, everything he says about uh, the triadlas? Well, I know for sure that m most astronomers in the community believe that triadlas is a comet and it is exhibits typical comet behavior, such as outgassing that we've seen, brightening as we get closer to the sun, typical tail uh, switching. So I believe that it's just your plain old uh, comet, just like the ones that we see in our solar system, but more unique in the fact that it comes from a solar system outside of our own. When we talk about uh, his size, uh, his speed uh, is different, uh, for example, from, from the Omamua, the, the Borisov, uh, why so, so big, uh, these three Atlas? Uh, you said, why is, why is it so, can you repeat the question? Uh, why so, so huge, uh, so big, uh, these uh, three Atlas? Uh, his size is different no? from, from the others. Um, I'm not sure how much different the size is, but we're definitely seeing a lot more vigorous activity from Thry Atlas. Um, this is, this could be in part due to the size. I'm not sure how big the, the nucleus of the comet actually is, because a lot of that is, uh, obscured by the, what we call the coma, which is like the sh sort of shell that it gets covered by by all of the outgassing materials like uh, water and um, CO, CO2 and all of that. It kind of obscures the nucleus, so it's like kind of hard to um, say the size, but I guess it is a little bit bigger than our uh, Muamua and Borisov. Talking about uh, these three Ayadlas, uh, we are waiting for the 19th of December. Uh, do you think this Tirayadlas is uh, a threat uh, to the Earth? Um, I think that what... Oh, you mean like when it's observable from Earth? Yes, yeah. so... Um, yeah, so right now um, it just made its closest approach a couple of days ago on uh, October 29th, but we're kind of in a a spot where the three atlas is just behind the sun and we can't really observe it from the ground so we're kind of relying on um our space-based missions to view it 
But um, once it comes around the sun and we'll be able to see it from ground-based observations um, as in as early as late de November and then into de December. Um, but it's an exciting uh, time to view it because it will be it has been processed by the sun and is outguessing very a, a lot and then it will be at the brightest point. This point we will be able to see deeper into the nucleus as I said before the coma sort of obscures the nucleus. So at that point most a lot of that outgassing has occurred when it made its closest approach to the sun. So we'll be able to see deeper into the nucleus and see all of those pristine materials that I was mentioning earlier. So it will be a very exciting time to see all of that. And uh, Tisa, what can we what can we learn about these uh, three Ayadlas? Uh, how uh, can we learn for, for the future? For the future, of course, yeah. yeah. So with every uh, interstellar object that comes through our system, we learn more and more about how we can study this rare object. Um, and uh, we can make plans for doing possibly an, a space-based mission where we can intercept an uh, interstellar comet sooner. There's been mul multiple studies about how we could do this or how we could utilize other space-based missions that are already in service. So that's another possibility for like direct imaging of an interstellar comet, maybe for future reference. And then there's also uh, the Vera Rubin telescope that's coming online and is projected to at least observe one interstellar comet per year or more. So that is a very exciting prospect in that we are we're going to be able to see more and more of these interstellar objects instead of just like one every decade or so so that will be a very exciting time and then what else can we learn well we can learn about the like i said what the co the chemical composition is of these extrasolar uh planetary systems and we can learn about um and it can give us some context for the evolution of our own solar system and Isa, how could it help the, the scientific uh, community? A lot of people is talking about uh, these three ayadlas. Uh, you have a lot of focus. Uh, how could help uh, in the future? Do you think uh, we could see, for example, more money for, for your work? I think that it's a very exciting topic for just the community at large and then for astronomers in general. I think that if a lot of people stay excited about this really cool object um, and the prospect that we'll see even more of them going forward because of our advancements in technology. I think that we could see more funding for this. Um, as of now, like in the United States, we have the government shutdown and a lot of uh, science funding depends on what the government's doing. So um, it, the immediate future is a bit uncertain, but I am hopeful that the community's excitement about this object will lead to more funding and more research on this cool object. What can these uh, three Yadlas teach us about the formation of planets and materials in other star systems? Right, so comets, they kind of, they're like debris like little pieces left over from uh, planet formation. So, and they're, and they're formed pretty far away from their host star. So they kind of freeze out all of those materials inside of its nucleus. So it holds on to those very earliest um, chemical compositions that were, that formed planets. So they hold on to those materials and as they move through the galaxy and they approach stars like our own sun, they start, they warm up and they outgas and all of those, all of that material is blown off and we can observe that and learn specific things about the composition that was um, in those earliest conditions in those extrasolar systems. Um, and we can also learn a little bit about where the comet was formed in the sol in their uh, source system. 
about how far away was the comet when it formed from its host sun, a star, sorry, not sun, <laughs> host su star, and based on what kind of temperatures the those materials condense at. Worry for more info about uh, this uh, three jadlas. Uh, I would like to ask you about uh, what is next in, in the study of the three jadlas. We are waiting for the 19th of December. Uh, what could be or what uh, could happen later? What would happen uh, far from this uh, 19th of December? Right. So we know immediately, like, we'll be able to see a lot of the brightening that we expect from a comet that has just had its closest approach to the sun. And then we will, I guess, like outwards of that, we'll be able to like continuously monitor the three atlases uh, activity, whether it experiences brightening or if it experiences a non-gravitational acceleration, or if we're just gonna continue seeing outgassing influence its orbit. And then, um, we're just be able to collect uh, the time evolution of 3i Atlas before it leaves our system, which is also exciting in itself. Waiting for this uh, 19th of December. Tisha, thanks for being here in Northwest TV. It's a pleasure when you're here. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Nosotros, Have a great day. Eh, terminamos ya 